didn't. That is an incredible fact. No, I didn't. I didn't know that, but I'm really pleased to hear that. Well, I didn't, but I'm not surprised to hear that. I've worked in various parts of the energy sector and the renewable sector definitely feels more diverse. I'm surrounded by so many amazing women. A lot of our most senior positions are filled by these incredible, hardworking, inspirational women. I think it is reflective of what it feels like to be in the sector. It makes me feel really proud. It makes me happy and hopeful. Proud, absolutely proud. Really hopeful that we're attracting the diverse workforce that we need to deliver the significant challenge of addressing climate change. I've seen a significant change over time, especially as the industry has grown so exponentially. And I think with that, that companies and the industry has matured and is able to offer um, more flexible working, um, encourage more women into jobs, have shared parental lead. At the very outset, there were very few women in the industry. I, I was one of the few at the very beginning. It was, at that point, very much male-dominated. Back then, I was an anomaly in a sea of men. I'm guessing I maybe don't look, speak, feel, you know, particularly the same as, as uh, people that maybe sat on the executive committee once upon a time ago. So it's really encouraging now that I come across young women who are doing hydrographic surveying, are spending time offshore, but or they're technicians. A lot more really strong, confident kind of young women coming through, not being afraid to ask for opportunities across a whole range of disciplines. What I've observed as well over the last few years is more men taking paternity leave, longer periods of paternity leave. And so suddenly taking a career break isn't a women issue. We are hearing different perspectives on panels. We've got some amazingly um, smart, clever women. At the very highest level of CEOs in large international companies. I've seen the shifts in rooms and boardrooms and meetings that the language is different, the tone is different, the people, I believe, begin to work better together in more diverse teams. And again, extending that beyond just gender in terms of diversity. I have a disability and I felt very welcomed and very able to talk about my disability, my chronic fatigue within the, the offshore renewable space. But we still have a while to go before we can say that we are truly have achieved equality. The renewables industry has to make a conscious effort to attract more women and more diversity to the industry. I think being really intentional and saying up front that it's really important to have that representation at all levels. We've got a way to go with ethnic minorities and with disabilities as well. Where we still have a skills gap and want to encourage more women into the industry is within the engineering and the more technical disciplines as well. We still see more male candidates than female candidates. We need to do a lot more with the education sector. I think there's a generation that are entering the workforce that are profoundly concerned about climate change, want to be doing work that is socially useful. I think, you know, there are lots of different jobs in this industry. It's so wide and varied, everything from engineering to communications, from legal to finance. There's a role for pretty much everyone in the industry. There are different ways of getting into the industry, not necessarily the traditional sort of degree graduate route. We are here to, you know, get us to net zero to address the biggest problem facing the planet and humanity, right? That comes with a lot of responsibility and I think that people really feel that and they want to create a sector that actually has that kind of wider view of environmental value and social justice right at the core. Diverse teams in their widest definition deliver better outcomes and I think we need to be leveraging all the skills of the workforce that we can to tackle this challenge.